Hello, welcome to Open Education Channel and this is ASP.NET Core Series. In this video, we will create an ASP.NET Core project from the template provided by Visual Studio and look on the details of project structure and the file contents. So let's create a new project, open Visual Studio, go to File, select New, Project. In the new project dialog box, in the left panel, go to Templates. Inside Visual Studio C Sharp section, you can see there is an option for .NET Core. Here you can see there are different templates for .NET Core framework like Console App, Class Library, many others, and ASP.NET Core web application. You can also find it under Web Templates, like here. But here you will find only two options for ASP.NET Core applications. One is ASP.NET Core application using .NET Core and another one is using .NET Framework. ASP.NET Core application can target both frameworks. The basic difference is that when we use .NET Core option, then that application is cross-platform and that can be hosted on Windows, Linux and Mac. But many times we need some .NET Framework features which are not yet ported to .NET Core framework. Then we need to choose or target .NET framework. But remember, after that your application will not be a cross-platform application and can be hosted only on Windows and IIS. This series is about .NET Core, so we will select ASP.NET Core web application using .NET Core. After that, we will give it some meaningful name like SPNet Core Demo. Click on OK. Next, here in this new window, it is showing available ASP.NET Core 1.1 templates. At the top, you can see there is an option to select the versions of ASP.NET Core. Available versions are 1.1 and 1.0 at the moment and 1.1 is the latest one. So we will select 1.1 which is by default selected. In the templates there are three options available. Impity, Web API and Web Application. Web Application template can be used to create web application using MVC pattern as well as RESTful HTTP services. While Web API is used to create a RESTful HTTP services only. Empty option will not have any contents and it will provide very basic features to create web application. Very similar to the project we created earlier when we converted the console application into the web application. Here you can see no authentication is selected. This is because we will not use authentication in this video. We will see how to secure the application using identity in further videos. Here is the option to enable Docker support. Uh, Docker is a new uh, technology. It is a software container platform. It packages all the libraries or packages and the application in an isolated container so it won't affect any other program. So it is like a virtualization technology but uh, it bundles only the libraries and uh, uh, software pieces that is needed to run that application only. Right now we are not going to use docker support. We will see it in the further videos. So now click on OK. So Visual Studio will create a web application project. This may take time because Visual Studio will create all files and then it will restore all the references or dependencies that our project use. This is the created project and you can see the project structure here. As every .NET Core application is basically a console application, so here you can see there is a program.cs file. If we open this file, then you can see it have a main method just like console programs have, which is a main entry point of an application. Inside this main method, 
This is creating a host with help of web host builder, which runs this web application and act as host. This host executes SP.NET Core application. It is responsible for application startup and lifetime management. A host is configured to use a particular server. Hosts responsibility includes ensuring the application services and the server are available and properly configured. Web host builder have extension methods which are used to configure that host. These are the extension methods which is used to configure this host. We used most of them in the earlier tutorial like use Kestrel which is a web server. Second is use content root which sets the current folder as the root folder of your project. Next is use IIS integration used for running Kestrel behind the IIS like a, a reverse proxy. After that here is the use startup which uses the configuration defined in the startup.cs file which we saw in the previous video. Here is the use application insights and this shows the application performance in Visual Studio. If you don't want this you can remove it but uh, I will leave it right here right now. In the last it is building the host and after that it is running it. Now we will see the contents of startup.cs file. We made the same startup.cs file in the previous video but only with minimum required method that is only the configure method in which we wrote code to write simple text in the browser. You can see it is just like any other class. This is the constructor of this class and it has dependency on iHosting environment. iHosting environment service gives the access to the hosting setting which was created by web host builder in the program.cs file. Inside this constructor, it is creating an instance of configuration builder. Configuration builder configures the application related values like location of database or any other value which you want to use in your application. It is configured in name value key pair fashion. You can save your setting in a key value format in any file and then you can load it here in this section. These configurations will be loaded in when the application will start. First thing it is doing here is setting the base path to the application's content root path. This is the same path we set in the web host builder. Due to this setting application will search file based on this base path. Next these lines are for loading the configuration files. Like here a JSON file is loaded using add JSON file and the file is appsettings.json. SP.NET Core can read multiple type of configuration files like JSON, XML and any file types that have data in key value pair. Like here in this appsettings.json file. Configuration is defined like logging and it is in key and value pair. So key and value. Back to startup.cs file, there are some other settings like optional false means this file is required and reload on change to true means when the contents of this file is changed then application will be reloaded. The second one is also similar, it is also loading a JSON file but it is loading the file based on the running environment. Also it is optional and there is not any file named appsettings.production.json or appsettings.development.json in the solution explorer. So sp.net core will search this file according to the running environment and if not found then it will skip loading this file. So it will not stop or break the application if this file is not found. Remember as we can load as many configuration files as we want if there is the same key value pair repeated in multiple files then the value from the last file will be used. In the last we are building this configuration builder and assigning these configuration settings to this configuration property. This configuration property will be used in the application to access the configurations. Next in this file you can see there is configure services and configuration methods. We will look on this in next tutorial. Thank you.